Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how to calculate the critical angle for total internal reflection. And before we actually calculate the critical angle, we're actually going to go over how to derive the equation for the critical angle. Okay, so this is the situation we have, and we're going to use this situation to derive our equation for uh, calculating the critical angle so that we can have total internal reflection. We have a light ray. It's being shined up from the bottom. It's striking that boundary and it's traveling through water, which has an index of refraction of 1.33, and it's going to cross that boundary, maybe, into air, which has a lower index of refraction of 1.00. Now, in order to have critical uh, total internal reflection occur, the light ray has to be traveling from a material with a higher index of refraction and potentially into a material with a lower index of refraction, and the angle of incidence has to be greater than the critical angle for total internal reflection to, to occur. We want to know what is that critical angle, okay? So if we shine the light at the right angle, the light will not be reflected, and it will not be transmitted across that boundary, but it will actually travel along that boundary. And that means that we have this angle of incidence, and this angle of incidence has produced a situation where the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. And we want to know what angle of incidence produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees because that is kind of the definition of the critical angle. The critical angle is the angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And we want to go through and see how we can calculate that angle. And first we're going to derive the equation for the critical angle. Now the critical angle is just a particular angle of incidence. It's a special angle of incidence that produces angle of refraction of 90 degrees. So this is Snell's law, N1 times the sine of theta 1. This is kind of my incident side. The N1 and the sine 1 and the theta 1 side are equal to N2 times the sine of theta 2, and this is the refracted side. Now we want to know what angle of incidence will produce an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. So I'm just going to take this theta 1 out and I'm going to replace it with theta c, theta c being the angle or the critical angle that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And now we can solve for this angle. We can solve for theta c, but first we have to solve for the sine of theta c. So we know, if we rearrange and we divide both sides by n1, that the sine of theta c is equal to n2 times the sine of theta 2, which is the sine of the angle of refraction, divided by n1. Now, normally, I've rearranged the equation. I would plug all the values in and solve for the critical angle, or at least first for the sine of the critical angle. But I just want to point out that we can kind of simplify this equation because n2 times the sine of theta 2, well, theta 2 happens to be 90 degrees is going to be and 90 degrees excuse me and the sine of 90 degrees is 1 so now I can simplify this equation I can kind of cancel this out because the sine of 90 is 1 so really this simplifies to the sine of the critical angle the sine of the critical angle is equal to n2 divided by n1 and I want to remember that N2 is the index of refraction of the material on the other side. Okay? And this N1 is the index of the refraction of, material, of the material through which the light is traveling before it would travel across to the other side. So this is the angle of this is the index of refraction of the material that the light is in, and this is the index of refraction of material the index of refraction for the material on the other side of the boundary, okay? And this is the equation that we use to calculate the critical angle. So let's calculate the critical angle. What angle do we need to get this light ray to travel right along that surface and get the angle of refraction to be 90 degrees? Well, let's just plug the numbers in. The sine of theta c is equal to n2, which is the index of refraction of air, divided by n1, which is the index of refraction of water, which is 1.33, and I can divide those two, and I get that the sine of the critical angle is 0.75. That's not the critical angle. 
the critical angle you should kind of know by now is going to be greater than you know one degree or greater than three quarters of a degree this is the sine of the critical angle so i have to use the inverse uh, sine function on my calculator because i want to know what angle has this sign i know the sign of the angle is 0.75 but what angle has that sign and if i use that i come up that the angle that has that sign a sign of 0.75 is 48.6 degrees so if i shine the light so that it makes an angle with the normal line of 48.6 degrees then it will travel right along that boundary if i increase the angle of incidence to greater than the critical angle greater than 48.6 degrees then I will have total internal refraction, excuse me, total internal reflection. And that is when all of the light is reflected off of that boundary. None of it is transmitted across that boundary. All of it is reflected and that's called total internal reflection. Okay. And for air and water, that angle is 48.6 degrees and it will always be 48.6 degrees for air and water. Okay. If we change either of those two materials, we'll get a different critical angle. Okay, now, where is this used? Well, this is used in fiber optics. We want to make sure that when we send our phone calls, our internet, all the stuff we do online that's transmitted through fiber optic cables, that it doesn't bleed out of the cable. So we have to have the angle, this angle, the critical angle, has to be greater. Okay, if we shine the light in at the critical angle, it will go right along that boundary. But we want to shine it in so it's all reflected in and we have total internal reflection, so we don't lose any of the signal. Now, the fiber optic cable has two parts, two main parts. It has a core, which usually has an index of a refraction of about 1.62. And then there's a special coating on it called the cladding or the clad. And the clad has a lower index of refraction. In order to have total internal reflection, the index of refraction of the material on the other side must be less. Okay, so now we have that set up. So now we can just calculate the critical angle. We know from the previous slide that the equation for the critical angle is the sine of the critical angle is equal to N2 divided by N1. N2 being the index of refraction of the material on the other side. And in this case, that is the cladding. So we put 1.52 divided by 1.62, okay? And we can divide that out. Now you should kind of think about it, if you know a little trig, the sine of the angle has to be less than one because the sine cannot be more than one. So therefore, it's always gonna be the smaller one divided by the bigger one. It's gotta be that way. So now we have the sine of the critical angle is 0 0.5, excuse me, 0 0.938. Now we use the inverse trig function, the inverse sine function, on our calculator, push the second function, push the sine key, you get that sine with raised to the power of minus one, uh, put in there, enter 0 0.938, and you will find out that the critical angle for fiber optic cable that has a core with an index refraction of 1.62 and a cladding of 1.52, the angle is just about 70 degrees. So if I increase this angle just a little bit, then I will get all of that light will be reflected in and all of that signal will be reflected in and you can spend endless amounts of hours wasting time watching YouTube videos okay not this one but the all the other videos okay and you can do the same thing when you shine the light down the other direction it reflects off that surface as long as it's greater than 90 excuse me greater than 70 degrees and you'll get all that light will be reflected back in and this cone here is often referred to as the cone of acceptance Okay, so that's how you calculate the critical angle. You use this equation, just N2 divided by N1, the smaller index refraction divided by the larger index refraction, get the angle, and that's it. It's relatively straightforward. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much.